live from the Balls Visual Radio Studios, this is the Blades on Ball Show. And now, here's your host, the voice of South African rugby himself, Hugh Bladen. Hugh, it's over to you. Dan. Dan, it's Blades. Yeah. We're live. I've taken a liberty. I tried phoned and left a message. But I've taken a lib- liberty. You're live on Balls Radio. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not kidding, I promise you. <laughs> so don't swear or do anything Dan, it's untoward. Sid, yeah, I, did, and I did warn you we might phone, eh? <laughs> yeah, you said so, that's it. Yes, yes, Dan, yeah. And you know, just to let everyone know yeah. who, who you're writing for these days, I think it's great, eh? Yeah, great to uh, see yeah, you but, back um, for City Press. Thanks for that, Dan, Blake. Yeah. Uh, Dan, and your opinion of the test match. Wait, look, Dan, can you chat? Yes, no, no, I'm fine. I'm, I'm just, I was just busy writing on the... Oh, do you have, do you have a deadline? Do you want uh, us to phone you back? No, no, I just I finished. In fact, it's gone. Uh, I was, it's, uh, it finished some time ago, but uh, as usual, because I'm, I'm an old fart like Nomis and Bladen, <laughs> I, I love it. my column without the attachment. <laughs> 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 so all the listeners out there will now know exactly what happened, you know. No, <laughs> Blade, yeah, in answer to your question, you know, I, I thought there was a lot of good in that test match. Um... What I really enjoyed uh, seeing was, was some real pace from the Springboks, using uh, the pace in the back line. Um, uh, for the whole of last year, Heineke Mayer's first uh, season in charge, all the talk was that uh, we're not using our talent, we're not applying the skills we have, we're not, uh, we're not uh, giving the players a chance to really express themselves. And I thought there was some good stuff in that test match. Um, I mean, I feel, I feel gutted for, you know, for Mark that his debut lasted only 60 minutes, but... I thought Mornay Stan tried very hard to keep the ball moving. Um, I thought Billy LaRue's selection was a good one because it's nice to see a player coming in at different places and making a difference. Um, I, I was astounded by J.J. Engelberg's pace. Mm. He seems to have, a, have a, an extra gear when he kicks onto the ball, so that was very good to see. Brian Abana, you know, in, in the form of his life. Beyond the Storm checking in as a spring boxer. So all in all, um, I thought there was a lot of good stuff a lot to build on, uh, and, and I, I must be honest, I came away feeling far more buoyant um, about Springbok rugby. Yeah, yeah. There obviously were some problems, you know, we got, we got done in the scums after, after the second half, especially when uh, Castro Giovanni came on. Uh, but when you look at that, um, when, when uh, Maya Mayaki came on, uh, things changed. We managed to fight back in the scums. We managed to settle things down, you know. So I think it's a team learning things. Um, and uh, and uh, I, to be honest, I, I feel I'm in a back, much better frame of mind about the Springboks at this time of the year than I was at the end of last year. I, I think that's great news and that's really positive. You know, it's so refreshing to hear somebody who's coming away with something positive about South African rugby. I, I said earlier that, you know, we're a funny lot, the South Africans. We wear the jersey, we wave the flag, and then we win the game and we come back and we say, it was a shot of shite. And, um, <laughs> you know, and um, it's really good to hear the positive things. I have to confess, I didn't see the test match because Joel and I left, well, we, we chatted about it. But you, had the, you can we, record yeah. a game, you know that. Anyway. I have recorded it, Sydney. Just checking. <laughs> Because, so in I fact, I'll be up in Nelspray doing the, the Italian... Uh, and I hope you press the right button. I hope you press <laughs> the right no, well, I hope button. my wife pressed the right button. <laughs> oh, no, that'll be okay. That'll be okay. That'll be, in <laughs> fact, my... Uh, you know, I think this, you know, the scrum is a worry. Um, uh, you don't like seeing the Springbok uh, scrum being put into reverse. Why is the scrum after, going backwards? Because, you know, the scrum, they... Uh, I think that they, they took... The Sharks took strain against one of the teams quite recently. They were taking strain yes, in the and, scrums. Uh, with, with, with all spring off front, though. But um, I think it happened after Yanni de Vici was taken off and felt, uh, and Castro Giovanni came into the game. And then, of course, the Springboks do think, and I know Heineke may have confirmed it to me, that he wants Puni Westhaven to take on the role of tight head. He feels he's got the weight. And, and the, the power. It will make him a very good tight head. Yeah. And the power. And, yeah. uh, and I think that, to me, is good thinking, because if you look, we've got lots of good loose heads. You know, loose heads not a problem at all. Uh, but we've really struggled to find that anchor of the scrum over the years. Yeah. And, and Puni was that, you know, it's played loose head all his life. It's, it, it is an adjustment 
Trevor Nayaki came on, and I'm actually his name. In in your car, in in the car. Trevor and your carney. I hope there's not a click in it that I'm leaving. <laughs> no, no, there are, I, I uh, battle to click those those QC yeah. guys. Go, 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 Yeah, it's a bit difficult. But, but I, I Trevor and your carney. Yeah. For his debut, uh, guys, and and I thought he did outstandingly. You know, it did settle down once he was there. Look, it wasn't a perfect performance. Yeah. Um, and, and one always has in the back of your, your mind how strong is Italy. But as Heineke, pointed, uh, Heineke Mayer pointed out afterwards, you know, that at uh, 2010, Italy were right back in the game. Things were a little bit shaky and a team full of new caps, uh, only six of whom played in the last test last year, settled down and came back and won well. And then he also pointed out that when last did Italy conceded five times, uh, and in fact, they haven't for a while, you know. And they yeah, can't right. In yeah. England, but now they win over France. So, so maybe we shouldn't be underestimating Italy. You know, we should give Italy a bit of credit in this thing. And if we give Italy a bit of credit, then therefore you give the Springboks a bit more credit, you know. And uh, so, I think as it started to the year, I think there was some, there was a lot to be taken out of it. Uh, and 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 we can look forward to some more because it does seem like. Uh, Heineke understands and realizes we have to use our backline. We have to add things to our game that be more creative more side and a more yeah and a more dangerous side. You know because mm. when you just bash, bash, bash and wait for the kicks, if another team stands up to that, you've got to find another option. You've got to you've got to add a dimension uh, to win a test match. You know and and I've always felt that what I'd really like to see is the rest of the world say. We want to play like the Springboks. Absolutely. Because they do things differently. Yeah, Dan, yeah, like I've been we, saying we, that we, about we, the All Blacks, eh? Oh, I want to play like the All Blacks. But well, everybody says we want yeah. to play yes, well, like that's the All the Blacks. Thing, you, know, yeah. if you go around the world and everybody wants to copy the All Blacks. Yes. Well, let them copy us. I, hear, yeah, I think I that's hear great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fabulous. Dan, City Press, I mean, where can they read you? In what? Well, I'm in the sports pages. Mm. I'm, I'm writing sports a column pages for of I'm in the sports City pages. Press. Of City yeah. Press, it's a Sunday. It's a Sunday. It's on Sundays, it's on sale, and I bought and I'm one. In print, I'm loving it. Is oh, that wonderful? Sports because, pages yeah. of the of the City Press. Yes, yeah, City Press. Yeah, I bought yeah. one, Dan, because just because I was with you on Saturday, whenever, and yeah, great, uh, great no, article. Good, yeah. And people, if you want to follow Dan Retief, it's in the City Press. It's magic, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's no, great. And, um, yeah. Unfortunately, with deadlines, I, I did notice the one in Durban. Uh, it was obviously an early deadline paper, the first edition that was there. Uh, but, you know, it, it, I, I think, too, if, I, if I'm a, it's entitled a little punt, City Press really wants to add rugby and cricket to their mix. Right. Uh, and and part, of the, uh, part of the plan is to really improve their sports pages uh, mm. and, and provide uh, readers with, with, with a fantastic read on Sundays, you know, because whatever anybody says, uh, you know, the Sunday paper is an institution uh, and there's nothing like sitting down with a paper and a cup of coffee yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and reading what uh, what rubbish the writers have come across. And, stuff. <laughs> 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 and you know, the, and the, <laughs> the famous remark is, I have yet to see a game that everybody else saw. <laughs> uh, right. Simon's driving our desk for us today, and he has a question I've got for a you. question. Yeah, Dan, uh, just your thoughts on, on the yeah. format of the competition and the teams partaking, because Blade said at the start of the show he, he watched the Samoa-Scotland game, well, he commentated on it, and, and he thought it was thoroughly boring. Yeah, it was. No, I thought it was a poor standard <laughs> yeah. of rugby. Gosh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, Simon, yeah. Um, in fact, uh, I think I expressed my, comp- my opinion even before it happened. I said... Uh, Whereas Australia has got the British Lions and, and, and the All Blacks have got a uh, full, France, full-on yeah. test series against France. Yeah. We've got this watered-down series. They came up with the novel idea of making a double headers. If you see, see the gaps in the stand, it didn't work. Uh, the, the fans were not enthused by it. You know, and I think that's the standard of opposition. And uh, sitting in the, in, in, in the press box and thinking of Blades and Joel having to call the Scotland-Samoa game, which was sort of like a low standard club game. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and, and it's utterly boring. The um, handling you know, errors Scottish were enormous. But those Scottish yeah, didn't no, even no, look it like appalling. they didn't look like an international rugby side. I mean, with their socks hanging down no, on no. them. They just didn't they looked like a, a no, second no, team right. first team. A uh, second team school side. They really did and no, the no, no, poor, you know, yeah. yeah I agree. And even the, and you know what, what shocked me most of all is the Samoans are very big. I mean oh. they 
they probably fielded, uh, if you if you include the the substitutes as well, the biggest front row we've ever seen. You know, I mean they. Yeah, the, Joel the was working it out. Weight. The combined weight was about yeah. five hundred and ten k's or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah so you. that you know, uh, every time a, a guy came on, he was bigger than the biggest. Yeah, well, guy, James you know, Johnson but, weighed a hundred, <laughs> weighs a hundred and forty k's. Unbelievable. But yeah. what I did see, Blaze, uh, it's the moment I don't fit at all. Um, you know, after 10 minutes, they were puffing, and any team that's going to move them around uh, is, is, is going to give them a lot of trouble uh, because they're just on a fast field. And you know what that said to me? is what, what about these Simone players that look so good in the Northern Hemisphere, yet when we see them on a fast field in good weather, they just weren't up the game. It just shows you how different the games are because at least in the Southern Hemisphere, the ball is moving to the, to the touch lines, it's moving to the back, back lines. And those players didn't like it at all. You could see they were uncomfortable. And I must say that now we play Scotland at Umbombella in Nelspray. Yeah. And I'm afraid it's going to be the, mass- it's going to be the massacre of Umbombella because unless the Scots find something, something miraculous. They'll get murdered. Uh, they're on a hiding. Yeah. Yeah, they are there. They're on a hiding to nothing. Mm, absolutely. And quite, a, and quite a serious hiding. And I must tell you, coming to the airport in Durban, uh, Kenny Brown, their captain, he's a superb guy and a very good captain and a good player. Yeah. He was, he was on crutches. So I can't see him being back, you know. So the team had given four players to the British Lions. Now Kelly Brown goes down. Yeah. They lost their hooker. I, um, I, I, I just wonder if Hanukkah Mayer won't look at that as well. And, and blood say, well, some other guys. I don't think we can lose to these guys. Yeah, let's give a whole lot of the other new boys a, a, a run in this one. Yeah, well, I think I, I, yeah. you know, I also don't think Hanukkah is one of those guys who gives away Springbok colours cheaply. So he may decide not to, he may blood one or two. Excuse my ignorance, what happened to Yano for Mark? Did he get, I mean, is he out? Yes. It's a hammy, eh? No, it was a hammy, but uh, Piet van Zell's coming to the squad now. Oh, really? <coughs> yeah, the, the, yeah, the cheetah's uh, scrummy, right. who I like a lot. Well, we've lost Dan. Dan? We've lost him. Have we? Yeah. Okay, well, we've lost Dan, but thanks, Dan, very much for t- uh, his opinion. Oh, I respect his opinion. Uh, he, he gives such a logical opinion on, on the game of rugby so often. And he once did a speech at the Joburg Sportsman's Club as well yeah. on the Ten Commandments of Rugby. And, and you know, well, you so that, well thought out. Wasn't that his book you wrote? Uh, no, that was the Holy Grail. Oh, correct. Yeah. The World Cup and the Holy Grail. Mm. <laughs> That was the Blades on Ball Show. Join the voice of South African rugby on your wireless next Monday for more unbelievable memories and banter. Until then, stay classy, like 20-year-old Glenn Morangi classy.